Welcome to episode one. We are thrilled to have your ear holes. Be sure to listen through to the end for a giveaway announcement. Enjoy, and put on that hypoallergenic bug spray, you crazy kid. Now, Only Sketches About presents Only Sketches About Camp. Great work, Reginald. Why, thank you, Winston. I think this final canoe is our best one yet. We'll surely win the race against the other camp tomorrow. Indeed. Hey, rich jerks! Yeah, we're talking to you! You guys are going down in the big race tomorrow. You think just because you're rich kids from across the lake, you're so much better than us. Well, we're the underdogs. That's right! You guys are upper class and you suck! Right, but aren't you guys upper middle class? Oh, shut up, you rich asshole. Your parents drive around in a Mercedes that they own. My parents only drive a Lexus that they lease. Yeah, you guys live in your giant mansions while we have to live in our puny McMansions. This doesn't seem as big a difference as you think. Oh, shut up! You think you're all high and mighty with a pool table in your basement? Don't you have a ping pong table in your basement? Yeah, which is a slightly smaller table. You guys just think you're so good because you own all those video game gimmick peripherals. Yeah, none of us actually own the Donkey Kong bongos. If we want to play them, we go to our cousin's house like everyone else. Guys! Brian, you go to the same private school as me. Yeah, on a partial scholarship. My family could never pay for full tuition but can comfortably afford it after a partial scholarship. You jerks have never worked a day in your life. Meanwhile, I had to get a summer job at an ice cream shop with a really chill boss. You make us sick. The big race tomorrow is our chance to put you in your place. Guys, nobody has to put anybody in their place. Yeah, we're really more alike than different. What do you mean? Well, we all go to a private summer camp, right? Yeah. 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 I I go to private summer camp, that's true. And we all voted Romney 2012, right? Yeah! Yeah, Romney 2012! 2012. All right! You see? We're not enemies after all! Huh, you're right. Sorry for all the trouble, guys. It's okay. Well... We'll see you at the race tomorrow. Oh, right. Well, this is awkward. Yeah, we already smashed all your other canoes before we got here. What? It's okay. Our dads can pay for it. Easy. Yeah, it's fine. Well, gold is back up again. Ooh. 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 I like gold. Hey, Gab. Gabby, come downstairs and eat your lunch. Okay, Mom. I made your favorite. One slice of bread. Now eat up. Thanks, Mom. Oh, and the sign-up form came in for Camp Father Christ of Joseph. Now, do you want to do the first week of July or the last? Mom, I don't want to go to Camp Father Christ this year. What? But you love that camp. Last year, you knitted. Mom, I don't want to go to Camp Father Christ. I want to go to Camp Ukulele Handjob. Oh, I don't know, honey. It's just that Camp Ukulele Handjob seems really mature. I don't know if you're ready yet. Mom, I'm 15. It's my last year to go as a camper. All my friends have been going for like two years now. And last year, when they came back, they all knew how to play the ukulele. I see. And they gave and received several hand jobs each. Hmm. Well, I guess it is good to be musical. But will anyone talk with you about the Lord there? I'm sure they will. If no one else does, I'll talk about him. But there's definitely going to be talk of the Lord at Camp Father Christ of Joseph. Plus, your friend Lucas goes every year. Mom, Lucas is weird. Plus, the counselors only talk to you if they know you're not menstruating, and they make us pray before lunch. But honey, I thought you wanted holistic values-driven community where you can discover friendship and achievement. Isn't that what camp is all about? Mom, no. I don't want that. I don't want that at all. 
I want to learn how to play Vance Joy's Riptide on the ukulele and then perform it for everyone at a campfire. And then, I want to stay at the campfire with a nice boy until everyone else leaves and let him finger me till the sun comes up. That's what summer camp is. That's what it's always been about. I see. Well, I can tell you've put a lot of thought into this and that it's important to you. So fine. If you really want to, you can go to Camp Ukulele Handjob. Oh my god, really? Thank you so much, Mom. You're welcome. But honey, can I just ask that when you're at camp, can you keep it to over the pants stuff for me? Oh, all right, Mom. I can do that for you. Thanks, honey. I have the best daughter in the world. <laughs> I love you. Aw, Mom, I love you too. You know, you were actually conceived over the pants. Hello everyone and welcome back to Shut Up, I'm Talking, ESPN's newest and loudest sports debate show. I'm Lou Mariscapone. And I'm Scott Michaels. And here are today's top stories. New York Jets star quarterback Luke Schwab found himself in trouble with the law again today. The Jets offense has struggled in the past and Coach Sanchez can't be happy that his star QB might miss training camp in a year that they're trying to make the playoffs. Yo, this is getting ridiculous. He's got to know that the NFL is taking extra care to punish any and all legal infractions this year, especially with all the negative press they've been getting. What did he do this time? DUI? Disorderly conduct? The statement that the league put out said that Luke Schwab was caught by TMZ cameras feeding non-starch polysaccharides to a bird. A real boneheaded move by Scott, who should know after three years in the league, that New York State Penal Code XZ103.1, which I cannot stress enough, is a real law prohibits people from feeding birds polysaccharides that they cannot digest. You gotta question this guy's commitment to the game, Lou. Schwab's suspension from camp comes at an especially tough time right after the entire offensive line for the Jets was caught gathering whale teeth off of a beached whale in Providence, Rhode Island. Everyone knows the teeth of a whale beached anywhere in Rhode Island is technically the property of a Queen of England per an 18th century whaling treaty. You can't keep cutting these guys slack, Lou. They don't have the heart to win the division. They don't have the heart to win the conference. They absolutely do. I got a chance to visit Jets training camp this year, and let me tell you, I really liked what I saw from rookie QB Stu James. Definitely doesn't seem like the kind of guy to drive around with an uncaged bear in the state of Missouri, or play checkers after dark in Vermont. Seems like a great fit for the system. Uh, unfortunately Stu James has been suspended from training camp this year as well. <sighs> Was he caught sparing the life of a lobster in Maine? No, he shot someone. In Montana? In the face, Lou. He's going to get a six-game suspension, though. Oh, I love a happy ending. Catch us this time next week where we'll discuss female referees. Can they be trusted, and will they date me? Psst. Hey, kid. Uh, huh? What? Who's Shh. there? Don't wake up your other bunkmates. Listen, I'm a tick. Huh? I crawled in the ear because I want to talk to you. What? A tick? Yes, I'm a tick. But I prefer to go by my human name I've chosen. Bathus. Are you gonna bite me and- No, 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 no. I'm here because I want you to turn me into a human. So badly. I overheard you telling the other kids today that you had magic powers. So you can turn me, right? Oh, um... Sorry, but no, I don't actually have magic powers. What do you, what do you mean? Uh, kids just like say that kind of stuff to each other sometimes. I guess I said it for attention. You mean you were lying? Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh no, man, I got so excited. I thought I was finally gonna be a camper in these woods instead of a freaking tick. Do you know how much being a tick blows? Uh, I've never really thought about it. Well, it's the worst, okay? I literally live to suck. Oh, yeah, it must be pretty bad having to suck blood to survive. Oh, 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 classic case of wordplay. I was not simply referring to my diet, child. I was referring to the fact that my whole life sucks. Sure, sometimes I get so engorged that I dissociate, but I'm also universally despised. I don't have any dick friends to keep me company because they're all assholes who voted for Romney 2012. I used to have a dog, 
but then I had to shoot him because he got rabies. I don't even do drugs to numb the pain because I'm scared of needles. And on top of it all, I found out I got Lyme's disease when I haven't even had sex in three years. How did that happen? Um, what? I, I was ready to end it all. And then you come along, and for the, for the first time, I had a hope that I'd be able to rise above my situation and be a human camper like I always dreamed. Go canoeing, sing songs about Jesus, suck the other kid's blood. We don't do that. That's all I ever wanted. And now the, the pain hurts even worse than if I drowned myself in the lake this morning. Uh, uh, I, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't realize my words would have consequences. I'm only seven years old. Oh, I'm be the only, the only seven years old. Well, if you can't change me, then I'm stuck being a tick, then... Then I guess I'm gonna bite you now, cause, cause, cause what else is there? Uh, no, P please don't. Uh, there must be some way to fix this. Well, would you be willing to work out a ratatouille situation where I hide under a hat and control your body? Um, no. Well, then here goes nothing. Ah! 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 <laughs> Annie, what's all that noise over there? Um, nothing. Well, that sounded suspicious as hell. I'm coming over. Shit. Now, what's the big... Oh, boy. Looks like there's a tick on your ear. Good thing I've got my tweezers with me. I'm just going to pluck it off and... No, no! Burn it with this match. Ah! Ah! Oh, my God. <laughs> Easy peasy. Only way to get rid of a tick? Burn it to hell like the disgusting, worthless demon it is. <laughs> Annie, why are you crying? It's dead. I'm just thinking about the meaning of life. Oh, well, aren't we all? Good night. Fucking weird ass kid. At least she didn't poop in her bunk like Gladys. I'm sorry. Eavesdroppers ne'er hear good of themselves, Gladys. Hi there, kids. It's your old friend, Smokey the Bear. You may know me from your favorite state and national parks. Reminding you to stay safe by preventing accidental fires at all costs. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. And the best way to prevent them is by choosing Nicorette. Over half of U.S. forest fires are caused by people smoking in the woods. So do your part. Ditch the cigarettes and slap on a fresh patch of Nicorette. I love how it sticks to my fur. I always say, when you're out camping, you want to be diligent about cleaning up your campsite because little bits of trash, such as, oh, I don't know, cigarette butts, can serve as accelerants in the event of a lightning storm. So be conscientious and chew Nicorette instead. The cartons are 100% recyclable, and it comes in two okay flavors, mixed fruit and mint-ish. Now, it may seem like I'm coming down pretty hard on cigarettes, specifically, but let me be clear. Just because one single cigarette can inadvertently cause the complete destruction of my natural home, that does not mean I'm anti-nicotine. Far from it. I'm pro-nicotine, but there are other ways to get a buzz without raising our planet. For me, that means using an alternative nicotine mechanism like Nicorette. And Nicorette specifically, because when I tried famously nicotine-free Chantix, I entered a semi-conscious dream state, and when I woke up, I had covered my entire vacation cave in Yosemite with gasoline. So this season, as our American families flock to the great outdoors and our nation's parks, be sure to pack a thick sleeping bag, adequate water, and a 40-pack of Nicorette. Because if I so much as see a Bic lighter or loose Newport, I will eat you! After all, I'm still a bear. And the town searched and searched, but the girl with the blue dress was never seen again. And that's the story of the Lake Travis monster. Ooh. Thank you for that chilling story, Raven. Okay, campers, now that everyone's gone, it's time for- I haven't gone yet. Right, Benji, I'm sorry. Last but not least, you got a scary story to share? Oh, here we go. Shh, 
Jake, let's be a good listener for Benji. Sorry, Counselor Ethan. My heart greets your apology and receives it. Benji, please continue. <clears throat> Once upon a time, in a town much like this one, at a sleepaway camp very much like our own. Yawn! Tucker! A group of campers much like us were plagued by a terrible being known only to the locals as the Campsite Crapper. The Campsite Crapper? Yes, the Campsite Crapper. For centuries, he crept into campers' tents and yurts throughout the night, making his dastardly deposits. Deposits? Poop! He pooped in their tents. Legend has it that the campsite crapper, though incredibly smart and devilishly handsome, was misunderstood by his fellow campers, and thusly they ridiculed him. Thusly? What a new... But they soon met their comeuppance when he filled their cabins with logs, so he gorged himself on fibrous vegetables and bread, biding his time, holding it in all week, and sleeping upside down like a bat until he was like a piping bag ready to burst with chocolate frosting. Oh, God, Benji. Then what happened? No, no, we're done here. We are not done here. Well, much like Santa Claus, the campsite crapper left his special brown coal for the kids who really deserved it, and he spared but one tent, that of his true love. Aww. Raven, don't say aww. This story stinks. Get it? And the campsite crapper and Rave... 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 Rave Mona... Rave Mona... Lived happily ever after they end. That's the end. Uh, that wasn't a scary story. Yeah, Beth, what is it? Over. Uh, yeah, Ethan, you're gonna need to take the kids there a little longer. Over. Uh, we're just wrapping up. Why? Over. Well, I'm just wrapping up a bunk check, and it looks like some kids straight up pooped in almost <laughs> all the tents. Over. <laughs> God damn it, Benji. Did you poop in all the tents? You didn't poop in my tent, did you, Benji? Raven. Much like a child on the first Passover whose doorway was anointed in lamb's blood, you were spared. Benji, why? 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 It was all in the story! Are you scared now? I think I'm gonna be sick. Oh, me too. Come on, Benji. Let's go back to my tent. Okay, that works, because um, I actually pooped in my, my tent a little also. Hey ladies, welcome to St. Clair High Varsity Cheer Camp 2020. Go Tigers! Woo! -hoo! Woo -hoo! Yeah. <laughs> My name is Coach Katie. Just a little bit about me. I used to work for an elite government organization with a very high security clearance. Then I left all that behind to pursue my passion for cheerleading and teaching children. But enough about me. Let's kick this camp off by learning some cheers for football season. Woo! Yay! Yeah. Okay, first one goes like this. When I say D, you say fence. D. Fence. D. Fence. When I say go fight, you say win. Go fight. Win. win. Go fight. Win. win. When I say destroy, you say target. Destroy. Target? Destroy. Tar target. target. Why aren't y'all cheering? Shouldn't it go something like, beat the Panthers? Yeah, but that's what everyone does. I thought we'd put our own little twist on it. Okay, I guess that works. Okay, for this next one, hold your hands like a football and go, move that ball, move that ball, move that ball, big blue. Move, move that, that ball, ball, move that, that ball, ball, move that, that ball, ball, big blue. Okay, next part. They're after you, they're after you, they're after you. Is it time to take the cyanide pill? Coach Katie, are you okay? Okay, yes, I was in the CIA, Sarah. Oh God, I shouldn't have said that. Are you happy now? Happy. Agent H, happy. Harry, he was so young. Coach Katie, whatever happened, it's not your fault. You were just doing your job. No, no, I'm fine. 
I'm sorry, that was just a slip up. It won't happen again. Put it in the box, seal the box, bury the box six feet under the earth. I have coping strategies, okay? Let's do it. God, cheerleaders are so weird. I wish my mom would just let me be goth like I want. Defense, defense, take that ball away and everything else you love. Hey, blood on our hands. Oh, Jesus. We killed a man. Oh God, no. Do as you're told and we'll let you live. What? Coach Katie, you're doing good again. You're explicitly yelling about your CIA trauma. What? No, I, I'm strictly forbidden from discussing anything I experienced during my time in the CIA. I'm just yelling about sports and teams. Uh, hey coach, what's that man with the tuxedo and sunglasses doing on that grassy knoll over there? Target destroyed. Mission accomplished, gentlemen. We've successfully eliminated target Golden Pom Pom and freed up funding for the Model UN team. Okay, tent, sleeping bags, cocktail weenies, champagne, and diamond ring. Wow, can't believe I'm going to propose to Karen tonight. God, I'm so nervous. Well, I hope Karen didn't forget the meatloaf. Can't get my camp on without meatloaf. Did someone say get their camp on? Like a bat out of hell, I'll be gone when the morning comes. When the night is over, like a bat out of hell, I'll be gone, gone, gone. Like a bat out of hell, I'll be gone when the morning comes. But when the day is done. Shit, Karen, is that meatloaf? Hell yeah, the king of camp, the god of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Hey, uh, I'm meatloaf. Why did you bring meatloaf? Um, you told me to. You said, hey, we're gonna get our camp on. Meet me in the forest on Friday where we had our first kiss and bring meatloaf. What? Meatloaf the dish, Karen. You know, meatloaf is our couple food. We had it on our first date. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just when you put meatloaf and camp in the same sentence, I don't think of our first date. I think of the sexiest man I've ever seen. Wait, you mean me, right? Okay, I think I understand what's happening here, Frankie. You wanted to go camping, but Karen wanted to dance all night and revel in some camp. Really? You would be surprised how often this happens to me. Yeah, hold on a second, meatloaf. Karen, you did mean me, right? Oh my god, you meant meatloaf. You think meatloaf is hotter than me. Uh-oh, this always happens too. You always said Meatloaf was my hall pass. The guy who sang I would do anything for love? I thought you were doing a bit. You look really upset. Don't talk to me right now, Meatloaf. Oh, God. Frankie, I I'm sorry. I just thought you wanted to do a fun, sexy thing for our anniversary. You thought I wanted to have a threesome with Meatloaf? Yeah, so we could finally do our Rocky Horror roleplay. It really is off balance with just Janet and Frank and Fritter. But no, Karen, I just wanted us to go on a special camping trip with our favorite food. I didn't expect you to bring a rock legend on the night I was going to... <gasps> what? Damn it. I was going to wait until the moon was out, but here goes nothing. <gasps> Karen, will you... Gosh, I don't even know how to find the words. Hey, man, I've been a bit of an imposition. Let me help you out. Well, baby, you're the only thing in this whole world that's pure and good and right. And wherever you are and wherever you go, there's always going to be some light. Oh, my gosh. Meatloaf, what are you saying? Karen, I think we should hit the highway like a battering ram and a silver black phantom bike. No, 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 no. What? Meatloaf, what are you doing? I'm proposing. No, you're not. You're camping, but me, baby, I'm camp. I... I'm sorry, Frankie. Meatloaf, of course I'll run away with you. Let's get out of here. <laughs> oh my god, he's flying his motorcycle to the moon! My name's Karen. 
name is Meatloaf and I love bats and I love motorcycles. Okay. Only Sketches About was written and performed by James Azzaretti, Gamal el Chris Fitzgerald, Cassidy Graham, Lauren Hardman, Ebon Kulkarni, Annette Storkman, and Gabrielle Williot. With a special appearance by Jordan Olds. Music by Nicholas R. Nelson. If you like what you heard, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Only Sketches About. And check out our website, OnlySketchesAbout.com, for bonus content, merch, and more. And to celebrate our season premiere, head over to our Instagram page to enter our season one giveaway. Because we as a team finally finished something for once, we are giving away a $100 Visa gift card to you, Mr. 1%. The winner will be announced on Tuesday, March 30th, during the premiere of Only Sketches About the Gift Shop. Be sure to subscribe and leave us a review. See you next week, and God bless sketch comedy.